gloomy and dreary and chilly outside. But that's not going to stop me. Uh, I want to climb up to the rim of the crater just to have a look over there. Because it's been about, oh, two years since I've been here. And it's a spectacular view. seven years at trapping and hunting and working as an archaeologist out in West Texas. But after I lost access to those massive ranches, 2,000, 10,000 acres, I wanted to look for a place that was similar. Chihuahuan desert style vegetation, wide open blue sky. I love the sky out here. It's just incredible. So I discovered this place and I've been coming to camp at this exact spot for about eight years now, in addition to numerous other locations. And there is a lone bull that kind of wanders out by himself, at least one that I'm aware of. That's the only one you got to watch your back for. But there's not really anywhere you can hide out here. <laughs> no trees to climb. And so just keep eye out where these cattle are. <coughs> but this is one of my favorites, particularly in the winter, because it's pretty good weather compared to the mountains and so forth. And we've got a cow over here that's a little bit antsy. And that is a bull. Turns out he is with the others today. He's going on his merry way. So, it was back in 2013. I became a commercial fisherman. All right, Mr. Cows, Mrs. Cows. Back in 2013, I became a commercial fisherman and started living off the sea. But I really miss just wandering and roaming out in the wilds. It's in the low 30s right now. Yeah, not too bad. It's nice out here because it's pretty dry. It's cold and wet that you want to avoid. This is kind of a weird place because during the day, it's going to get up. Sometimes in the winter, it can even get up into the 80s. Nights generally drop to near freezing or below freezing. Uh, coldest it's been out here when I was here was uh, about 17 degrees. There's no need for you to buy a house or live in a house these days. We've got cars, which is basically a built-in mobile shelter. And you can just take a seat out. You've got a nice bed here in the cab. I've got this bad boy hook a solar panel up to and charge during the day so I can recharge my camera at night. I have a very small thermoelectric generator that uses the heat from the fire to charge a battery pack and then I can use that to also recharge the camera or any other electronic devices that I have. So here I do have enough food, a little bit of peanut butter, some chips, some uh, apple cider a little bit of uh i don't know what that is anyway all this food was given to me oh half a loaf of bread we had a small amount of oil so all this food was given to me and it's about three to four days worth of calories so that'll keep me going until i 
get back in the swing of things out here. There are water sources out here, but no natural ones. They're all man-made, and they're usually on private property or owned by the ranchers that have these cattle out here. And so there's really no way to survive without packing in your own water in this particular location. So that's what I had to do. You can survive pretty much indefinitely off of eating nothing but jackrabbits. Now we've got to avoid protein poisoning, so we're going to use a few tricks to do that. You can get enough skulls and furs to sell to maybe pay for gas to the next spot or licenses or whatever else I may need to buy. This isn't some kind of a psychological torture experiment like some challenges are. I'm out here by myself. I do not like being by myself. I did ask three other people to come along, but they all declined. So by myself it will be. Uh, maybe it'll inspire some of y'all to live a life where you don't have to get a job, become a slave, go to work nine to five, just so you can dream of a time in the distant future when you can retire and live the so-called good life. And you know what? That may never come. You could get a disease and die in a couple of years. You could be in a car wreck a few minutes from now. You've got to live each moment as if it's your last. One thing I always try to do is put my camp in a somewhat protected location. So I'm on a pretty high point, but I'm completely surrounded protected here being out in the open. And I'm also high up so I can see all across the desert behind me and well enough away from the main road where hopefully not too many people will bother me. There have been some people out here blasting shotguns at skeet targets. Well, morning has arrived and it is cold, overcast, and dreary. But off there to the north, you can see that little uh, line of sky opening up. And hopefully, it'll clear up today and we'll get some sun. Right now, I'm just uh, heating up some water for some oatmeal. I said I got some extra food, cheap stuff, so that I could. Uh, Spend less time on rabbits and more on coyotes, so hopefully that'll work out. Uh. Finally, a little bit of sun. Well, I did a little scouting yesterday, following this dry wash down a bit and uh, it leads to an area that kind of drops a bit so I got a overlook of a wide area and it's not too crowded with brush so hopefully the coyotes will come up there. Coyotes and other predators like to come up to dry washes where there's really soft sand and they're uh, hidden from everything else. They can sneak up and ambush. Too much coyote action down here in the low brushlands. So I'm going to head back up to the rim of the crater. And it's a big crater. Pretty sure there's got to be at least a couple of packs of coyotes that live down there. It's finally warming up. Not like yesterday. It was cold and windy. Today finally just a very light breeze. And finally some sun hitting my face. Feels good. I'm just resting here for a second. Rehydrate a bit, 
And then we'll go climb up the rim and see what we can do up there. Now, even though it's winter, it's warming up quite a bit right now, and inside of that crater, it's like a big reflector mirror. It's got a dome microclimate, a lot hotter in there. So, you've got to be on the lookout for rattlesnakes. I've been here in the summer and seen as many as three rattlesnakes in just a couple of hours curled up almost perfectly blending in with this gray brown sand so as we climb and look around gotta look real carefully when I'm stepping make sure I don't step on a rattler There's always the tricky part, finding a way down this part. It's very, very slippery. I'm just going to walk around here a bit. See if I can find a somewhat not so steep and slippery way down. Also, this is where I've seen most of the rattlesnakes is down on this stuff. Right, we're on somewhat level ground now. And uh, I'll probably just build a little cairn down here and mark a boulder somehow. But I'll know this is a good way to get back up. Behind me, we have something called a wikiup ring. It was a ring of stones that anchored down a wikiup or teepee or other indigenous shelter. Boy, do we have a cliff over here. Can't get too close in case it caves away. Oh, this looks like a pretty good spot to try out the coyote call. Not planning on shooting any here because that's a long way down. Um, it's about 150 yards down there. 
and I think I can make a shot. It's just getting the coyote back up all this. I need to make either a travois or a tump line or some way to carry it up. We're just skin it out down there, I guess. But, uh... <coughs> You're looking out over a vast area like this. You don't want to focus on anything. Just let your eyes go out of focus and uh, look for movement. When you see movement, check it out with the scope. I've decided on a plan of action. I think today uh, he's already spooked. So we'll come back early tomorrow. Forget the flat desert area. This is way better. And uh, we can't even hunt down in the bottom too. Get a much closer shot. Get in some of those big boulders that you can see down there. And uh, I've decided to skin him out down there. So I need to make sure to have my gloves, my skinning knife, a uh, bag to put the skin in, bag for the tools, and hand sanitizer. And then I think we'll be set. So, I think I've decided whenever I do finally get that coyote, after the skin is dried about three days later, then I think that'll be a successful trip and it's time to head on home for Christmas. <laughs> it's nice and warm in this crater. No wind, nice sun, nice warmth. I wonder the coyotes like it. I do too. Looks like this will be how we're getting down into the crater tomorrow. Let's see if we can get a good view of it. It's a little dry wash going from the up here. Definitely a lot easier than going down all those boulders, that's for sure. He's going to have to make a cairn there too, so I remember how to get back up. <clears throat> Alright, I think it is time to uh, head on back. That was a workout. <sighs> it's always easier going downhill.
can't be overhydrated in the desert. I built a nice little framework to hold my flushing beam up. It's made out of uh, yucca bloom stalks, the same stuff that I used to make my friction fire kit for Sotol. Sotol and yucca are the two best things to make friction fire kits with in North America. But they're also really good to make frameworks, lashed frameworks, uh, shelter frames, wiki up frames, things of that nature. It's pretty much the only straight wood you're gonna find out here. And this one was kind of thin and flimsy, so I just lashed two together to hold it up. And you can see that you could actually put quite a bit of force on that. The other thing I need to do is give my gun a good cleaning. I don't want to pull that crap back to the barrel, so we get rid of the patch each time. Each time, it gets a little more cleaner. You want to keep doing it until there's no black stuff at all. Okay, about 15 patches later, and I say we're clean. We've got quite a bit of oil in the barrel, or a lubricant, and uh, we don't want to leave that in there because out here in the desert that's going to attract dust and sand that will stick inside the barrel. We don't want that. So we're just going to run a couple dry patches through there and then uh, we'll call it good with the barrel. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Well, I wish someone else was out here to uh, enjoy this with me. It's just incredible. Dead quiet except for the occasional airplane or helicopter. You hear the flies buzzing, gentle breeze. Sometimes you can hear your own heartbeat. Well, the sun is just about to go over that rim. And when it does, it's going to get a little more chilly here. So I'll spend the rest of the time of the day by just reading. I think we're all set to go for tomorrow. I'm probably wondering why don't I hunt coyotes in the evening? Well, you saw the hike down there. You can imagine doing that as the sun is setting. And then rushing to try to get that hide fleshed before the sun sets. Plus, you can get your animals in the morning. That gives you a whole day for the skin to, to dry a little bit faster. If you did it at night, uh, it would definitely not dry as quickly. You don't want it to dry too quickly though, because then it'll warp. So far, I'm enjoying it here. Uh, 
<laughs> like I said, just wish someone else was out here to share it with. Night, just because this camera is not made for low light. And I have one little LED light. So this is what it looks like. And I'm leading way down by the floor right now. This is what it looks like inside my truck at night. Oh, everything's looking good. Blue sky, sun's coming out, it's getting a little warmer. Winds from the north, so the coyote won't be able to smell me since they're coming from that way. I've got my little tool kit, skinning knife, bags, hand sanitizer, gloves are down there. And the great coyote hunt begins. here for about an hour or so and no signs of coyotes so I'm gonna head back up to the upper rim it's pretty chilly in the shade here and then I'll continue the call from up there Well, no signs of coyotes today, and I've been up here, oh, about half the day now. Finally warming up, where I can start taking some of these layers off, too. I'm going to make a tail puller for my coyote if I get one. And basically, it's just a 
a split lever with a hole on one end so you can put the tail in there and close it up and then just pop the tailbone right out. Well, it's not perfect, but I think it's going to work. Tail puller is done. It's a pretty simple and straightforward device. You should have some uh, fairly loose lashing right here. That way you can still open the tool up. So I have this really nice suede leather gloves, but when I was trapping, using the uh, tool to compress the conibird traps and also twisting baling wire and so forth, I tore these nice suede leather gloves. And I was using some dental floss sewn back up. Dental floss is really strong. It's really it has a lot of properties like a sinew. It's flat, multiple strands, a little sticky. It doesn't shrink like sinew does, but it's very good for holding leather together. It's also what I use to uh, sew some of my tanned hides. That Barely tell that it was ever torn. Be the thread in so you can see where it's at. It is cold today. Got my full cold weather gear on, everything I've got. Nice insulated boots. Fire going to warm up my hands. Let's see off towards the southeast we've got some kind of front over there and then off to the north there's some more clouds coming in that way and I know it's supposed to rain at some point this week which hopefully it's not today here there's no reception of any kind and I told my family before I came to this spot I said I'm going to Kilborn Crater uh, if you don't hear from me uh, before or within 10 days, I probably didn't make it. So I'm gonna do my best to get out of here before then. Coyote or no coyote. Be Today, I'm going all the way down to the basin. Maybe it'll improve my chances.
that hike is just utterly grueling. So, uh, no coyotes. What I think is happening is trying to get lower down on that rim. It's pretty loud scrambling over all those boulders, no matter how quiet you try to be. And I think they're spooked. I think it's time to move on if I want to get that coyote. Pretty sure I'd rather be out here where no one has bothered me at all than over there with a high probability of being disrupted by a pack of AR-15 blasting hooligans. Well, finally made it to my next spot. Even though it was about 10 miles away from my other spot, it was about 30 miles of driving on a pretty rough dirt road. Sandy, rutted sometimes, and uh, needless to say, it was a bit hairy for me because my front shocks are shot. All rusty from the days of commercial fishing. Anyway, I made it in one piece. Well, looks like we had some ruffians out here pretty lately. And, uh, I'll leave my stuff alone if it comes back from shooting beer bottles. <coughs> Dos Equis. <clears throat> Shotguns. Uh, 12 gauge. Yep, 12 gauge shotgun. And we got some, uh, the AR-15 rounds. Yeah, 223 AR-15. Making quite a mess. I just leave my solar panel alone. All right, I'm gonna start getting quiet because uh, over this ridge there should be some bunnies unless those guys shot them all for target practice. That's one of my old cubby sets. Well, between having a dress so insulated, the sun coming up, heavy boots, I'm getting pretty hot. But, gets in my first jackrabbit of the trip. It's about 150 yards out, so a little too far. But I'm going to go change into some lighter clothes, and we shall continue the hunt.
Alright, first rub. Subsonic rounds do not go too well. But as soon as I blow those stingers in there, that's like a rub. Now, rabbits can carry a disease called tularemia. It's less likely in the winter. But uh, the bacterial infections will really hit your lymph nodes and get in some real trouble if you can't get any antibiotics. So, I'm not going to touch the rabbit until they're well cooked. I would say that's a pretty successful start to the first day. Rabbit stew is done. And I'm actually not going to eat much of the meat because the main thing I'm trying to do is boil the fat. Any fat there is, because jackrabbits don't have a lot. But uh, drink that broth and then eat the internal organs heart, liver, lungs, brain, tongue. Now, brain can contain prions and those are not destroyed by cooking. Now I am taking a risk, but I have eaten many brains before and I think I'll be okay. Besides that's where most of the fat in the animal is located, at least in the jackrabbit, because jackrabbits are so lean it's just unbelievable. You just can't stomach too much of that meat. Well, here it goes. Let's see how it tastes. Not bad. So here I've got some of the tastier portions. Heart, lungs, liver. See how those turned out. Mm. That liver's good stuff. Every bit of washing water out here. Oh, wait, wait, coming up. Crazy now. That came out of nowhere. It's been dead calm all day. All right, let's see if we can just let the camera fall away. The only thing you're eating is rabbits. You can get protein poisoning as your body tries to break down that protein without another source of calories like sugar, starch, or especially fat. So my goal with the rabbits is just to get as much fat and vitamins as I can from the internal organs and from the broth and not eat the meat. Hopefully, I can get a coyote in the next couple of days and uh, that'll provide me with a little bit more meat that I can actually eat. But basically, if you're trying to survive off rabbits, you're going to have to spend a lot of time resting. So that's what I'm doing right now. last night as usual. The sun coming up over there. So I'm gonna just hunker down in here until it warms up a bit so I'm not overheating like I did yesterday on that rabbit hunt. 
so I can wear some lighter clothes. And I'm going to cover some much further distance. And I'm going to go to a sand dune where I know there's a lot of coyotes. I've called them in there before, and I also heard them there yesterday morning and this morning off in that direction. We're about a mile and a half away each way. See a jackrabbit right now, right in front of me. About 50 yards, easy shot out in the open. But I'm hoping for a coyote, and I don't need a coyote and a jackrabbit. But hopefully, if I don't get a coyote, uh, I'll go after that jackrabbit on the way back. I've just seen a cottontail there, but two. They're way tastier than jacks. Take the cottontail and pass up on coyotes today. Just fine. Well, no rabbits this morning, so just heating up some water for some apple cider. Once it warms up a bit more, I'll probably try to go out again. Burned a lot of calories while looking for those freaking coyotes. Right, got another rabbit, jackrabbit. It's getting pretty hot out here right now. And got my rabbit, but we have to go quite a ways back. That's the general direction behind me.
Well, I've been uh, boiling my rabbit for several hours, and this one had significantly more fat than the other one. Either that or it was because of a different processing method. I cut it into smaller pieces, and uh, let's have a look at what's in there. All right, moment of truth. Will this rabbit stew be any better than the last? It is just, I mean, there is so much fat in there. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Wow. That's a lot more fat than the other one. Crazy. So, I, uh, poured my rabbit stew into this little bowl so you really see just how much fat is in there. I mean all that sparkly shimmery that's nice fat. Pretty incredible. That fat that stuff is gold. Last but not least it's a rabbit brain. Rabbits, rabbit hunting is pretty much, you get your rabbit and then you just have to rest all day long. And this is night. Oh, I'm just sitting here, soaking up the sunshine and silence. That's what I love about this place. Uh, people might look at it as just a barren desert. But where else can you find a place this quiet today? In the wind, grasshoppers jumping and flying around. That sky. This place would be paradise if just some other people would come along with me next time. That's the only part that always gets to me. Life is meant to be shared. Well, off to the daily grind. And you guessed it, hunting rabbits. Nice cottontail just ran into that burrow. Unfortunately, can't trap or else I'd put a snare right there and I bet you I'd get him. This sand dune bump ahead is one of the highest points around, so I'm just gonna post up there for a bit and wait.
Coyote. I'm just gonna wait till you 100% stops moving because uh, I know you don't want to get risk getting rabies. I got a long way to carry him back too. Quite a job carrying him back, but it's got a beautiful fur and lots of calories. That was long and exhausting, but now the real work begins. I'm going to case skin it, flesh the hide. Cut the meat out, dry it. I think it's about 30,000 calories. Alright, here we have case skin. That one looks pretty bloodshot. Well, looks like quite a feast. I've defleshed all the leg bones and got it jerky out to dry. Now, we're not going to eat this jerky raw, obviously. We're going to boil it up and make some more coyote stew over the next couple of days. Over here, you can see the bones that have been defleshed. I'll smash those open with a rock and toss them with the stew along with the tongue and heart. 
and I think that the head can wait till tomorrow since it's gonna be dropping to freezing tonight it should be okay I'm not gonna eat that I'm just gonna boil it up simmer it and uh, save the skull to sell hopefully get about 30 40 bucks for it Dirt and grass never hurt anything, eh? Now, tongue and heart. Looks like it's got some nice fat on it. Can't be too safe. Now, ordinarily, this wouldn't be much firewood, just some creosote branches. But with this dandy little guy right here, that would be enough wood to boil for two hours, maybe three. And we've got a nice boil. Well, coyote stew's done. I'm letting the broth cool off a bit, but we can go ahead and start on the meat. So here we got the tongue. Little sandy. Yeah, damn, that's good. That was way better flavor than the rabbit. Next, we got the heart. Mm. Mm, that was a glob of fat right there. Guess what we need. This <laughs> stand is kind of annoying though. Hey, free toothpicks. Good morning. Sun is up, <laughs> but it is still well below freezing. See all the condensation coming <clears throat> out. You know. So, Today we're just uh, doing some basic chores, little tasks, and uh, boiling the coyote head over here. So we already got food. Uh, just take it easy today and do some chores. That coyote skull is nicely done. So I've been charging up my tablet here, that's why I used to review my videos every day. And it's already got it up close to 100% in less than an hour, or so that little generator is damn good. Right, look at that. You can see in there how the meat has peeled away from the skull. That's just what we want, so we can pull that meat off. This little stick I made, just like a little screwdriver, to help us work the meat off and also get the brains out. So now we're going to separate the lower jaw. That'll help us get some more of the meat out. Most of the meat, cartilage, and gums from the jaw. So we'll set that aside and finish up the head. Now that I've removed the majority of the meat and cartilage from the skull, I'm going to work on the brain. So we've got this little hole here. And there's the brain, and we're just going to insert the stick and wiggle it around, mash that brain up. It's very important to get the brain out so that it doesn't rot. And then as we get it good and mashed up, we're going to put it in there in the warm water, shake it around, and shake the brain out. Just keep repeating that process over and over until there's no brain left at all. And there we have it, one clean skull. 
when I get back to civilization, I'll soak it in hydrogen peroxide so it'll be nice and white. So right now I'm cutting up some of this coyote jerky to uh, see if I can put it in some stew. And we have yet another brutally cold morning. Looks so nice outside, but it is quite cold. I'll hunker back down for a wee bit. <clears throat> cold or not, it's time to get cracking. Shot about 100 yards, we'll see if we can get him. Too far. God damn. Oh, I've been chasing these rabbits all over the place now and I'm overheating a bit. So it's time to get some of these layers off. Well, I saw lots of rabbits today, including a cottontail, but about five or six jackrabbits too. But they were just too fast. Either that or I was just too slow weighed down by all that cold weather gear. So we're just going to take it easy today. And tomorrow we'll try again a little bit later in the day with lighter clothes so I can keep up with those rabbits. I think that's the strategy that's been working best so far. In fact, all the rabbits and the coyote I've got around probably around 11 o'clock in the morning so later on when it's warmed up and I can move faster and they tend to start settling down a bit Part of being a subsistence hunter is conserving calories so right now during the driest part of the day just rest in the shade and reading a good book. Several good ones here. One about plasma physics and one about how to think like a Neanderthal. Just what we need on a trip like this. this morning 
but it's still cold enough where I can't go out without the heavy winter gear. So I'm gonna just get a hunger down and wait till it warms up enough, and maybe I'll get those rabbits today. Off to the daily grind, and today we're not coming back without Bugs Bunny. Well, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. for the most tastiest and by far the most nutrition filled part of the rabbit the rich broth mm. way better than any part of the rabbit in fact if you're going to try to live off rabbits indefinitely you don't want to eat the meat at all you just want to boil everything up chop up the bones meat boil it all up get that nice fat and then maybe eat the liver every other day or every three days and brain every day. Ah. Very good. 
I want to conserve water out here, but all of this rabbit cooking is making my pot quite dirty. So we're just going to use some sand and rocks to scour that pot out. And then we'll rinse it up. Getting there. The final task of the day is to finally take the coyote hide off of the stretching board or piece of plywood. It's been three days, so the rabies virus should be totally destroyed by desiccation. Let's see what that fur looks like. Oh, nicely dried. And I think we got a nice one. We need to brush out some of this blood and clean that up. But that's a pretty nice coyote hide. Tail turned out pretty good too. We are expecting some rain tomorrow or at least some kind of precipitation. So I'm just going to roll this coyote hide up so I can store it safely. One coyote fur, ready for tanning. It's only about one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm plumb tuckered out. So I'll probably just rest for here for a bit. Uh, maybe I'll brew up some apple cider before the sun sets. You can see the weather's changing. Got a lot of clouds starting to come in. And uh, hopefully it doesn't rain too much tomorrow. Or at all, that would be nice. But it's basically supposed to be colder tomorrow. So, we might be hungered in all day. See how it goes. Look at that sky. Right now, there is not a cloud in the sky. I know it's a uh, all foggy in here but outside it's quite clear no rain came I'm pretty happy about that and then it looks like we can go hunting rabbits again today it also feels considerably warmer than it has been and words are not coming easy to me out here anymore finally reached our uh... oh fuck it be able to day look out there and that's only superficial. When you look closer, it can be dark. For everything eats everything. And uh, it's the attitude you got to have out here. Remember a quote by Yves Gelinau, a solo round the world sailor. He said, The ocean is beautiful, but it's a terror. Storm whipping up behind me, winds picking up, temperatures dropping, the dark clouds on the horizon. So we're gonna need to get this rabbit pretty quick or else turn around and head on back. Hopefully we get them. Storm is fast approaching and it looks like it could be a nasty one. So I'm about a mile from my camp right now and I'm just gonna get back as quick as I can. Maybe it'll pass and now I'll hunker down and we'll get those rabbits tomorrow. be thinking why is he so worried about a little storm well 
a number of reasons. One, part of the nature of nature is that it's unpredictable. Kind of like the butterfly effect. Little variables can cause completely different outcomes. So, it could pour here today, or it might just be an overcast day. But I do see rain falling in those clouds off in the distance. And if I get wet out here, I really have no way to warm up. I mean, you can build a fire, but not much in the way of shelter. My only shelter is my truck, and you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just turn your damn truck on? I have very limited finances, and make sure I'm on the right trail here. Back on track. So, every bit of resource that I have, whether it's my reserve food, ammunition, water, gasoline, I have to conserve it as much as possible. Just because if not, then I'm going to be stuck out here, and I really will lose my mind. I'd survive. But it wouldn't be fun, and I would not be sane. I'm not meant to live alone. So at some point, I've got to make it back to the relatives and convince them to come out here with me, or someone else. Well, that's why I'm worried about this storm. Can't afford to get wet. Also, I'd, even if I did get a rabbit that got wet, I'd probably burn more calories trying to warm up than the rabbits got in it. So, I'm pretty sure I'll make it back to camp in time. Not too far now. back right as this storm is coming in. Windy. Look at this. Alright. Get up top down the hatches while we still can. I already got my coyote skull and skins in the truck. Flashing beam. I'm just banging my truck up here. Hopefully, the storm will pass pretty quick. The front of the storm is to get the work gust. If you're sailing, drop the sails. Alright, flashing beam is down. Well, now the desert needs the rain. good now. When it rains in the desert, it usually rains fast and hard. Hopefully fast will be correct for the day. Glad I got back just in time and got everything in. Whenever you're living off the land, a book by Lawrence Gonzalez called Deep Survival. And uh, he says, you know, children under a certain age have a higher rate of survival because they follow their instincts. When they're hungry, they eat. When they're thirsty, they drink. When they're tired, they sleep. 
In cases like this, you see the weather, get the shelter and hunker down. It'll save your life. And if you got food, so I do have some food reserves, it's time to chow down on them. It's better to eat now, live hand to mouth, than to starve yourself. Now you got the energy to make clear thoughts for your next day. Well, most of the rain has stopped. You'll see a lot of droplets in the front window. But it's still pretty windy out there and the temperature has plummeted. So the smartest thing to do right now is just to hunker down till it warms up, till I warm up, because I definitely have gotten a bit chilled. Truck makes a fantastic windbreak, but it doesn't do anything for insulation. So, best way to warm up is simply to trap your own body heat. Your body heat is constantly trying to maintain the temperature of about 98 degrees. And you can trap all that. It's a very good source of uh, staying warm. I think it's way better than fire, in fact. Unless you've got uh, indoor fire that can trap and insulate all the heat coming from the fire. Fire doesn't do a whole lot for you in really cold conditions like this. So your best course of action is just to try to use your own body heat to stay warm. That's our plan for the day. The worst of the storm has passed. There you can see where it came from, and there it is now, off in the distance. However, it did bring some pretty strong wind with it, which has uh, <clears throat> really plummeted the temperature, and made it even feel colder with wind chill and so forth. So I'm just hunkering down in here, reading a book about plasma physics, and then once it warms up a bit more, I'll go out and look for those rabbits again. Hours later after the storm, it's still really cold and windy. In fact, it's so strong the wind is here. Slams my door shut. Thing to have that really Oh, looks like we're going to be hunkered down for pretty much the entire day. And I see another row of clouds off there in the same direction that other storm came from. So Hopefully it clears up by tomorrow, but we may be hunkered in one more day. We'll see. dead calm today. Such a difference from yesterday. I guess if you wait long enough, the weather will change. We will get that rabbit today.
whenever I go on an adventure like this, I think back to a story of Christopher and the Candles, who went to Alaska with a 22 rifle and ended up starving to death. And I remember there's a quote in the book about him, Into the Wild, from another Alaskan commenting on another adventurer who also died out there. He said, you know, he could have wintered over, but to do that, you'd have to be a tiger, a killer, a fucking animal. Out here, it's time to become a tiger. Of all the animals, I am the lion, and of all that exists, I am time, which consumes all, and the source of all things still to be born. Now I am become Shiva, the destroyer of worlds. As long as I've ever had to go to get a rabbit. That's uh, one of the longest shots I, I've had to take on this trip. Thank God I got him. Made it back to camp. And once again, I am plum tuckered out. Rabbits are getting pretty scarce here. Well, not that they're really scarce, it's just that I've got all the ones that flush and stop. Now it seems the only ones are left are the flush and run ones.
fried rabbit. Oh yeah. I've decided that uh, 10 days is long enough here at Black Mountain. Uh, rabbits are getting hard to come by. Haven't seen or heard any more coyotes. things uh, on the internet called these internet challenges you can do and post it online such as chowing down on Tide Pods which is pretty insane but uh, I'm all for natural selection so let those guys keep doing that <laughs> take the idiots out of the gene pool